Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a motorcycle racing TV show, Team Chicago Challenge. But no motorcycle racing today. This is at the, we're in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association, Air Venture for 2024. We're going to talk to some folks with um, a DC-3 that went to Europe for D-Day. This was the 85th anniversary, I believe, of D-Day or 80th anniversary of D-Day. So we're gonna to talk to someone that flew over with the DC-3, which is also the C-47. This is an actual C-47 that was involved with D-Day. And we're gonna also talk to, um, go get some of the jets that are here also. But I think it's gonna be a very interesting show. I'm gonna head on in, see what's going on. It's always great it's coming to the EAA Air Adventure. And don't forget my email, teamdan45 at gmail.com. The EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association, Air Venture is a huge event. This year, over a one week span, over 686,000 folks came to enjoy aviation. 861 commercial exhibitors participated by selling new planes, aircraft, accessories, upgrades, and knowledge to the flyers, builders, and enthusiasts of the EAA Air Venture. We now are in the north field and we see Panchico. This B-25 comes out of Delaware. This is a highly polished aircraft. You can imagine how many hours to keep it this shiny. As you look in the front, we can see there are two 50 caliber machine guns that are controlled by the pilot. There's also additional 50 caliber machine gun controlled by the bombardier navigator. A few years ago, I ran into the Warbird Living History Group, and I spotted my old friend Steve Zippy Saharius. As we see Larry Kelly hand and zip a bomb to pose for a picture. And this year, I had a chance to talk to Zippy again. Steve Zippy Zaharias. I'm part of the Warbirds Living History Group here at EAA, and our mission here is to uh, support the aircraft by providing the uh, living historians that would have uh, been either in World War II, Korea, or Vietnam is particularly our focus. Our, our base is actually the 340th Bomb Group, which was the 12th Army Air Forces, which would have been in North Africa and moved up the boot of Italy. And how can we get a hold of you? Got email, website, US Airborne Trooper at gmail.com. And what are you going to do? What's your plans today around here? What's uh, we just did Warbirds in Review, and this afternoon we'll do Warbirds in Review. We go on before uh, the, the main portion of the show, and we have guys or gals in the equipment that would have been used with the aircraft. Right, right. Uh, Dan, if you're looking up the, uh, the group on Facebook, it's Warbirds Living History Group. Great. Thank you, Steve. And now we're looking at Devil Dog. Devil Dog is a U.S. Marine Corps PBJ or B-25. This aircraft is a replica of an aircraft that fought in New Guinea. They were used for ground support and to attack enemy shipping. And as long as we're talking about New Guinea, let me add a story. As we all know, our president, Joe Biden, is probably the biggest BSer in the world. You know, Bo Esser, his entire life, even before being a lifeguard, he lied about his entire career from college all the way through his political. Well, now I have a story he may have told one truth because I know in New Guinea, down airmen were eaten by cannibals. The United States Army Air Corps did execute a few of these native cannibals to set an example. 
So maybe once Joe Biden told the truth about his uncle being eaten by cannibals. We're now looking at Lady Luck. The first B-25 flew in August 19th of 1940, and over 9,816 were built. Lady Luck also has a couple machine guns in the nose as we see the top turret. Top turret locations were changed from different models of the B-25. And the PBJ did not have a top turret. We are now looking at Miss Mitchell, another beautiful B-25. The B-25s used two right R 2609 Cyclone engines, 14 cylinders making a 1800 horsepower top speed was 293 miles per hour. Besides machine guns in the nose, they also made a few B-25s equipped with a 75 millimeter cannon. We are now looking at a Douglas A-26 Invader. This aircraft first flew July 10, 1942. 1,570 were built, and many different nose configurations were used. It had two Pratt Whitney R2800 18-cylinder engines making 2,000 horsepower. Top speed was 323 miles per hour. They renamed this aircraft Million Heiress because on the wheel flap we see the old name Millionaire. In 2017, I was at the EAA Adventure as we celebrated the 75th anniversary of the Doolittle Raid over Tokyo. The aircraft flies from north to south. Remind us of the Doolittle Raid, 1942, 16 B-25, launched from the deck of the USS Hornet with less than 400 feet to take off as we see Panchico come by, followed by Yankee Warrior. When we have a Russian replica, yes, during World War II, and Miss Russians were our allies overhead. I believe this is the oldest flying B-25, BJ, Devil Dog from Texas, flying north to south and looping over Lake Winnebago. Sights, the sounds of these aircraft flying overhead. It is great. It looks great. It sounds great. Next by, it is Champagne Gale, another B-25 out of Ohio. Landing now, it is this half the oldest flying B-25 in the good old USA. Next it's Hot Gen, a Canadian aircraft with the D-Day stripes. Another beautiful B-25. Georgie Gale lines up Coming in from north to south, Whitman Field. This aircraft from Fort Clinton, Ohio. That was footage from 2017. Now also in the north field, we see a DC-3. This is Varus Jet Sails. 
the DC-3 was first built in 1936. 607 DC-3s were built, 10,656 C-47s were built. I had a chance to talk to Jesse Barnes, the salesperson with Ferris Jet Sales. I'm Jesse Barnes. I'm out of Topeka, Kansas. I'm with Ferris Jet Sales. We brought our gorgeous DC-3 out here, formerly the Clipper Tabitha May. Uh, we bought this about three years ago, and we basically use it as our, our Goodyear blimp to promote our, our brand, Ferris Jet Sales. Um, our boss, Brooks Pettit, he grew up around DC-3s. His father flew DC-3s. He always knew that he wanted it to be our flagship for our company. Ooh. So we've owned it, and uh, we redid the interior. You'll find uh, not much original on the interior because we replaced everything with, uh, with airliner seats. We wanted the... Uh, to have plenty of so space. use this to take your uh, customers, yeah, for potential nice... clients, right? Uh, people that just love the history of DC threes. We take them up, right? Um, anybody and everybody. We're part ninety one only. We've never chartered it. Right. This actually used to be uh, CBS's plane. This was a uh, CBS's corporate oh, really? plane for uh, for years. Um, then it became the Clipper Tabitha May, which is what most people remember it as. And then uh, we bought it three years ago and repainted it and rebranded it and. We uh, keep it flying, keep, so, the, keep the Dash 94. So moving. what kind of jets do you guys sell? We've, we've sold anything from starting at Cessna 421s and 182s all the way to Gulfstream You use and new and... Oh yeah, everything, we do yeah, everything. Right, we, uh, right. We just like to represent and give mid, you know, good Midwest hospitality and uh, take care of people because transactions can be very easy or they can be very hard right. depending on who you're working with. So right. uh, we try to take all the worry out of so what's the cheapest stuff? jet you can buy <laughs> <laughs> depends on the year and the uh, airframe total time right but uh, yeah that's that's open for interpretation so, <laughs> so. okay so yeah. uh, email or anything where I can uh, people so, can go uh, look at your company yeah so Ferris Jet Sales that's V-A-E-R-U-S mm -hmm. um, dot com mm -hmm. or if you ever uh, needed any help it's sales at VerisJetSales.com, that's our email. Or personally, I'm Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, at VerisJetSales.com, and we'd be happy to help anybody out that needs uh, some advice. So, doesn't matter what you own, we'll take care of you. So, Thank you, Jesse. As we look at a couple more of the DC-3s in the north field here, the EAA Air Venture, this one here is just called DC-3. I don't have any more information on this one. This one here is named Western Airline. The DC-3s use the same engines as the B-25s. They use the Wright R-2609 Cyclone engines. 14 cylinders, two rows of seven, making 1,800 horsepower. As we see the logo for Western Airlines. This one here, Placid Lassie, is the true war hero. This aircraft flew on June 6, 1944. The D-Day invasion, and it was also served in Europe until the end of World War II. This aircraft has participated at the 70th anniversary, the 75th anniversary, and this year the 80th anniversary of the D-Day invasion. And I had a chance to talk to the pilot, Ben Smith. My name is Ben Smith, I'm a pilot for Placid Lassie. So the DA squadron, the whole idea is to get together and work as a team. So we all got in there scattered across the country. So we gathered in Oxford, Connecticut to give people time to fly across the country and meet us. And we can work as an operation together. Get up, brief, fly a mission, get information, land, debrief the mission. Work a lot together so we're working as a team together. And then we had a Hudson River flight where we wanted to fly past New York. So we got, a, got up in formation. And then we actually had four C-47s and a Diamond. Then we had a... Uh, uh, Twin Beach, we had a couple T-6s and an Avion for the rest formation. 
flew over President uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt's grave, because it's nearby, uh, flew over our local airport, flew over West Point, a thousand AGL, because the cadets wanted to see that. Down that river, past Manhattan, did a 180, came back up the Hudson, and LaGuardia <laughs> said, right turn over Central Park, and flew right over LaGuardia at about 700 feet, and back home. <laughs> the next day we got up, and we flew to Presque Isle, Maine, which is the original jumping off point for the Blue Spruce route. Right. For us, last cheap U.S. gas. After that, the price of gas doubles. <laughs> so the town went out and, and gave us a good time. Um, and then the next one got up and flew to Goose Bay, Labrador. Okay, so you started out, you they other in Connecticut. Connecticut. Then you go, then go to, to Presque Isle, Maine. Maine. When you're burning 100 gallons an hour, U.S. fuel at U.S. prices is better than Canadian fuel at twice that cost. <laughs> so last cheap fuel, relatively cheap fuel. From there, you're going to Goose Bay, Labrador. You're trying to get up as high as you can in Canada because the next leg is to go over to Greenland. And that's and, another. And that flight, from what I've read, is 770 nautical yep. miles. Okay. It's a long leg. Right. Over cold water. Right. <laughs> and the other thing is going into North Shore Greenland, the airport is open six or seven hours a day. First come, first serve for fuel. You can't pre-order pre type thing. And it takes them about an hour and a half, two hours to fuel one of these airplanes. So we put so many airplanes through a day. So you have to think about that logistically when you're bringing multiple airplanes. From there, so basically land, refuel, and then go to um, Iceland. Iceland. You really don't want to stay overnight in Greenland because A, it can snow. You might be stuck there for days. It's a town of 100, one restaurant, one hotel. Right. You get what you get. Right? It, it's a, it really, it's one of the green areas of Greenland is yes. where the airport is. Yes. And I, that's probably only four and one side of the year. Yes. <laughs> and then from Iceland, it's another five or six hour leg into Presswick, Scotland. Right. And that's the end of the original route. Right. And from there, you can go to wherever you want to in Europe. Right. Now, we actually fitted ferry tanks. We went direct from Canada to Iceland. And that was nine and a half hours in the air. That's a long time over cold water. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where did you, in Europe, on D-Day, which is June 6th, because the main reason you got these C-47s going to Europe is because on D-Day, they were used for gliders. And paratroopers, yes. And paratroopers, and they probably flew around the clock. Yes, yeah, so various squadrons came over various times. We were over there for nine months before D-Day, this airplane came mm -hmm. over. Um, and so, yes, these airplanes towed gliders, drop paratroopers for various missions, but they're also the workhorse. You know, when Patton outran his supply lines, they'd fill them full of jerry cans and fly fuel to the front. Also, food and bullets and that kind of stuff, and bring the wounded back. Or later on, it was rescued POWs, or even German POWs. Mm -hmm. They were flying all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, sir, with this opening, I've seen pictures where they could even get a Jeep inside it, uh, yes. aircraft. If you take the front bumper off, you can just have a turning radius to get a Jeep inside. Right. So what is the history on this aircraft? So this airplane was delivered in January of 43, delivered to its squadron later on in the year, crossed the Atlantic in September of 43. On the 6th of June, 1944, she towed a glider of, uh, of uh, paratroops for the 101st Airborne. They were bringing in artillery and engineering units to help with people on the ground. Came back to a second mission on D-Day, plus ones after that. From Operation Market Garden, or the movie A Bridge Too Far for those who are not history buffs, she towed gliders and paratroopers for the 82nd and 101st. Fast forward to the Battle of the Bulge, when the 101st Airborne was surrounded at a city called Baston. She dropped three combat supply loads on Baston while they were surrounded, helping them survive and break out. And then in, in the spring, dropped the 17th Airborne across the Rhine in Operation Varsity. Mm. Plus all the other missions I mentioned. After the war, she was sold off rather quickly and became an airliner. First from Operation out of Oakland, California very briefly, and then moved to Boeing Field up in Seattle, ran for 20 years in airliner with West Coast Airlines. And then spent the next 30 years as a cargo dog for operators out of Washington, North Carolina, South Carolina, until she lost an engine and the operator could not afford to fix her and he walked away. And then 10 years later, a rich guy bought her, got her flying again, bought her to Oshkosh, got her running in eight weeks, went to Oshkosh, and then turned her into a foundation so we could bring her in public and see her. We go to air shows, we go to Oshkosh, we drop paratroopers. So, Both military and marine actors. So how many uh, miles does this aircraft have? She has any about 49,000 hours on her, to the best of our knowledge. <laughs> the highest known DC-3 is somewhere in the 90,000 hours. She's got a lot of life to go. <laughs> now, it's got the original engine still in this yeah. one. Engines no? last oh. about 1,000 hours. Right. She's probably had 50 engines on her But lifetime. I mean, it's the same 
Same type. Same type engine. So an engine types it times out or starts talking to you by putting metal in the oil. Mm -hmm. Then you put another engine on, you send mm -hmm. the other one out. Sometimes you send them that's a core for another rebuild. Sometimes you have that one rebuilt. It depends. Mm -hmm. In right. airline service, they just swapped engines left and right. Right, 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 right. Well, it's great talking to you. And uh, what's the next time you're going over your, to Europe? 2029, we hope. You hope until? We went over in 14. We led the mission in 19. We went over, led the mission in 24. We're looking forward to 29. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're looking at footage from the takeoff from Doxford, England, as the 30 C-47s that was Placid Lassie first, and now we're seeing Miss Montana, 15 American aircraft, 15 C-47s from the rest of the world participated as we see Placid Lassie taken off in 1944 on June 6th, 832 C-47s were part of the D-Day invasion, the largest naval invasion in history. The C-47s brought in paratroopers and 3,937 troops on gliders. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, 13,000 Americans from the 82nd and the 101st Airborne paratroop in at night starting at 1 a.m. on June 6. 5,000 British paratroopers from the 6th Airborne also landed behind enemy lines. This year, 1,000 paratroopers celebrated D-Day. Over a million people from around the world were in Normandy for the 75th anniversary. 5,700 French policemen kept everybody safe. And now we're on the flight line, the jet flight line, as they park this North American T-28 Trojan U.S. Navy trainer. As we listen to the right R-1300 engine, seven-cylinder radial engine, we hear jets overhead also. And I take a look at Lock P, P-80 shooting star, jet aircraft and right next to it is a T-33 trainer, United States Air Force. These were the first jet planes used by the United States Air Force. And now we see this Italian built trainer and I had the opportunity to talk to the owner, Bob Baker. Yeah, Bob Baker I mean, from Oklahoma. Oh, I don't know. I don't do all And the I aircraft do is a Cy Marchetti oh, yeah. S211. Uh, yeah, yeah. It well, was built in 1990. Now, uh, the uh, is a, a pilot, trainer, light attack so fighter, like has five hard points yeah. to do the whole circle. for yeah. ordnance. Oh, oh, it uh, uh, easy flying airplane yeah, as a jet. You got to respect it. But uh, Pratt Whitney engine, very reliable engine. Get service on it anywhere in the world. Um, service ceiling, 40,000. Top speed, 414 knots. It's uh, just a great flying airplane. So, how much fuel does this thing use? You know, of course, it's jet, so depending on the altitude. Right. You know, down low, you may burn 100 gallons, or, you know, 700 pounds. Right. Get up high, get down to 70 gallons, or maybe a little less. So the fuel, the fuel efficiency is better the higher you oh, are. Oh, every jet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I. There's I, a reason the Boeings fly at 35,000. Right. So a jet engine is. More reliable, do you think, than a piston? Oh, definitely. 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 To a really a, a great design engine. and Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's a reason all the 
Boeing's yeah. use them. Right, right, right. Compared to propeller driven and so this was a trainer. Where was it built? In Italy. In Italy. Okay. Yes. The guy in the other plane and uh, was something like, now, was this used when you bought it or? Actually, this one had never flown. Oh, really? Yes. So how did you get it? Uh, I got a phone call from a friend. Uh huh. And he said, "You never believe what I found." Mm hmm. And so I bought it. Mm hmm. Now I have another one at home, identical to this, mm -hmm. but it's got six thousand hours. Mm hmm. So was. This painted like this, or did you paint this no, like it, this? This is original paint. This is how it came? Yes. So you got lucky? Yeah. It showed up in two shipping containers, mm -hmm. put the wing on it, the tail group on it, avionics, and flew it. So, so it was that complete? You got a good price? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Bob, for that wonderful information. And now we're looking at a few MiG-17s. Now, I believe these MiG-17s belong to Fighter Jets Incorporate. Randy and his crew fly these jets, give demonstration runs, and even turn on the afterburners. So you can Google Fighter Jets Incorporate to get more information about these MiG-17. Special thanks to DAC over Normandy, Global News, Daily Mail, and this is Flight for that wonderful footage from 2019. And for more information on the Experimental Aircraft Association, it's EAA.org, AirVenture.org, and join us in 2025, July 21st through 27th. Contact me, and I love to hear from my audience. It's teamdan45 at gmail.com. Remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing for great motorcycle racing action, Dan Schmidt politics, to learn what makes America great. I highly encourage you to visit the World of Motorcycle Museum. They're in Winnemac, Indiana, four miles south of North Judson on Indiana Highway 39. But give them a call first at 574-896-3172. It's a great trip and a great collection of motorcycles. And stop by Rich's Yamaha in Lockport, Illinois to pick up your copy of the Team Chicago History Package. We'll give them a call first at 815-838-8130. Their website is richesyamaha.com. Pick up your copy of the Team Chicago History Package. And if you want to learn more about motorcycles, there's nothing like going to a swap meet. There's a good list of swap meets coming up. Walnextswap.com is more information. I will be at Woodstock in October, and I'm trying to go to Springfield for the short track August 29th. I hope to see everybody there.